Dr. Zeus on the Loose is pretty great. And it also made me realize that I had no idea what Green Eggs and Ham was actually about. To be fair, my only reference for that book is from Friends. So I'm now glad that I actually have a deeper understanding of it. Dr. Zeus on the Loose was released in 1973. It's directed by Holly Pratt, written, of course, by Dr. Zeus. And we have a great voice cast, including Alan Sherman, Hans Conrad, Paul Wilchell, Bob Holt, Mel Blanc, and Howard Morris. And I'm not entirely sure who Mel Blanc voices, or indeed Howard Morris, because neither of whom uh, are listed on Wikipedia. They are listed as additional voices on IMDb. If anybody has any more information about that, please feel free to share. And in this beautifully animated short film, we actually have three Dr. Zeus stories. And I will go through them and share some thoughts and basically talk about what I thought about the actual stories as well as the animation, because... All three of these were new to me. As I've mentioned before in my other Dr. Zeus discussions, for whatever reason, I never grew up reading Dr. Zeus, which is a shame because we have the same birthday. But his stories just completely bypassed me as a child. And I'm really enjoying discovering them as an adult. And I have to say the three stories here are pretty great. So there will be spoilers now as I discuss what happens in them. The first one is The Sneetches. And this is about characters called Sneetches, which are, they have a pretty fun design. I really like the animation design of them. And they go around saying that the Sneetches with yellow stars on them are far superior to the Sneetches without yellow stars. And they ultimately have to learn that actually that's not the case. No one Sneetch is better than the other Sneetch, which is a brilliant message for humanity in general. No human is better than another human. Well, maybe certain individual humans, yes, but in terms of different cultures or, or races or anything like that, no one is generally better than the other. And it's a really important message, and I think, especially for children, where children might have something that makes them different. I'm thinking even of little things like a child not having the latest gadget or the latest shoes or whatever it makes them different but it doesn't make them inferior just because they don't have something that the others do so there are a lot of situations where where the story of the sneeches could really apply here my only small criticism and it's not really a criticism as such i just found that the story maybe lasted longer than it needed to it is definitely the longest of the three and i found that there was a little bit of fluff a little bit of padding that I personally didn't think needed to be there. But in general, I did really enjoy it. And of course, it's a really important message. Then we have the Zacks, which was pretty brief. It felt really short, but it didn't feel like it needed to be any longer. And this is about uh, the North going Zacks and the South going Zacks. And I, I quite like the design of the characters. I don't love them, but they're, they're pretty decent. And they bump into each other. And neither one of them will step to the side to let the other Zacks pass. And they are both so stubborn that they just stand there. And they stand there for a very long time to the point where the world around them is changing. But because of their stubbornness and their unwillingness to move, they're missing out on everything. And I think that that is such an important message as well. All of the messages in this are brilliant. But stubbornness can really affect a person and it can affect other people as, as well because they're both being stubborn, so they're both missing out on the world around them, but they're also affecting the other person as well. And I feel like this is something we can all really, really do well to remember. It's not just about being stubborn, but also about putting somebody else first. Neither of the Zaxes, is that the plural of Zax? Neither of the Zaxes were willing to move for the other person. It was all about what they wanted and they were not prepared to budge. So it's about not being stubborn, but also that stubbornness can affect other people and sometimes you should put somebody else first ahead of yourself. And I think there are a few really nice messages here and it's definitely one that I, I rather enjoyed. Even though I didn't completely love the animation of the characters, the rest of the animation was great. And I had a lot of fun with the, the actual message and absorbing that and thinking, yes, that, that's true. Stubbornness can really mostly affect the person who's being stubborn because you're going to miss out on a lot. But also, it will affect other people. And then we come to the third and final story, Green Eggs and Ham. 
as I said, my only reference point for this is Friends. It is briefly mentioned in other TV shows and films and things, but in terms of actually knowing the words, I had a brief understanding from Green Eggs and Ham, uh, from Friends rather, and now I now I understand what it's about, and I really liked it. It starts off with Sam I Am offering uh, a character Green Eggs and Ham, and this man says no. And I will not eat them here, and I will not eat them anywhere. And it's beautifully written. It's it's so wonderfully written and so pleasant to listen to. And then ultimately, he tries the green eggs and ham. And in a way, it goes back to stubbornness for a little bit because he refuses to listen to anything Sam I Am has to say about green eggs and ham. So he doesn't ever budge on his his. Well, he does obviously ultimately, but for the most part, he's so stubborn he refuses to listen to anything Sam I Am has to say or even consider that there's an alternate possibility. On the wider scheme, we also have two messages. One is, in my opinion, one is about being open to trying new things because you never know what you are like, particularly important for children who are being faced with a lot of new foods with textures they may not like or flavors that they may not care for. But if they don't try them, how will they know? And of course, it is the classic question of how do you know you don't like it unless you've tried it? And this is exactly what we get with green eggs and ham. And the third thing that I read into this is that there's a message there about taking the time to listen to other people's opinions and preferences and opening yourself up to other people's way of doing things. And of course, this is Sam Ayam's way of eating. He eats green eggs and ham. If you're open to other people's, I guess, cultures in a wider scheme, you might learn something new. You might find a new interest if you're allowing yourself to actually be open to those things. So I think there are quite a lot of things going on here. And I really rather enjoyed it. I thought Green Eggs and Ham was an absolute delight. And as a complete package, Dr. Zeus on the Loose was pretty brilliant. The stories are fabulous. The messages are great. I don't think I mentioned, but the cat in the hat introduces the stories, which was a nice touch as well. And, and the animation is brilliant. So all of it is really fabulous. Dr. Zeus on the Loose is definitely worth watching.